one? How about this one? Let's. Here we go. Here, here we go. Let's try this one. Welcome to Church of the Palms. <laughs> My name is Bill Reynolds, and I serve on the board of the Church of the Palms Foundation. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we bow our heads for the prayer of invocation. Let your face shine on us, mighty God. Break through the obstacles that keep us from seeing your way. Melt down the barriers that keep us from knowing the embrace of your love. Remove from us the low esteem that keeps us from valuing the overwhelming gift of life that you entrust to us. Speak to us here in life-changing accents. Amen. Let us praise God through our worship.
Today, the fourth Today, the fourth Sunday of Advent, we will light the candle that represents love. The love of God revealed in his humble appearance as an infant. Listen to the scripture reading from John 3, verse 16, 17, that that reveals the good news of the love of God revealed to the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that however believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. We light the candle today that in preparation for the coming of Christ, let us worship God. nor punished us according to our iniquities. Let us respond to the prayer of confession. When our spirits despair and we deny our blessedness, when we ignore the mighty things you have done when we doubt your mercy, when we are proud in the thoughts of our hearts,
When our wealth causes others to go hungry, when we allow the divisions of the world to divide the body of Christ, help us, your servants, according to the promises you have made in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Let us affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended unto hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now I invite the children to come forward for children's moment while we greet one another in Christ's name. Good morning. Good morning. Do you guys know how many days until Christmas? Seven. Six. Six. What? How many? Six. Wow. Let's see if this is on. This was, this was our only working one for a while. Try again. Six. Six. Yes. Do you know how many worship services we have until Christmas? Six. I know. One was a good guess. No, no, no. We have six services until Christmas. I don't know how you've been getting ready at your house, but at my house, we have been playing a lot of Christmas music. And I was wondering, what's one of your favorite Christmas songs? What is it? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh my gosh, that's a great one. Do you want to sing a line of it? No, that's all right. What else, what's another favorite one? Run, Run, Rudolph. Run, Run, Rudolph, our preschoolers sang that one. Jingle Bells Rock. Jingle Bells, oh, say it again, sorry. Jingle Bell Rock. Jingle Bell Rock, nice. Holly Jolly Christmas. Holly Jolly Christmas. Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells, all right. These are amazing Christmas songs. I have something to tell you that you may not know. You know who the mother of Jesus is? Yeah, Mary. Mary wrote a Christmas song. It's recorded in the Gospel of Luke, and I want you to hear the very first line of that song. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Wow, Mary wrote 
wrote that because she wanted to thank God for all the good things that God did in her life. What's a good thing that God has done in your life? Yeah, what is it? Help people. Yes, God helps people, helps you to help people. God made you. What else did God make that is such a good thing in your life? Oath. Earth, yes, absolutely. Earth is a great place to live. Does anyone here have parents? <laughs> How about grandparents? Yes, you know what else God did that made it such a great thing for us, such a good thing for our life? He gave us Jesus, who was born in a manger, who grew up and showed us how to love and how to live. And then Jesus forgave all our sins and made a way for us to go to heaven, right? God did all these great things. That's why Mary sings her Christmas song. It's why we sing our Christmas songs. We're so happy that God sent Jesus and for all the good things that God does in our life. Will you pray with me? Thank you, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We love you. Amen. You can go with Miss Carol out to, I think, a birthday party for Jesus, maybe. Ooh. And singing Christmas carols. <laughs> Wonderful. Good morning. We're so glad you're here. Uh, at Church of the Palms. If you're new here, we encourage you to connect with us. Check out our website. There's all sorts of wonderful things. Yes, six services in the next week. But then into the new year, lots of exciting things planned. You can also connect with us on social media, Facebook and Instagram in particular. And you can reach out to Pastor Mingy, who can tell you so much about our church, about who we are, and talk to you about membership here at Church of the Palms. Uh, I have a couple of announcements for us this morning. The first is that over 900 stockings, little stockings, were stuffed with candy very lovingly and will be delivered to the children in, uh, at Booker Middle School. And this is something that Dee Weber has done for many, many years. And she just wanted to say thank you to all the people who helped make that happen. And I hoped that we might also take just a minute to thank Dee. She is a treasure. She has such a heart for children and for years and years has done everything she can to help support and love them well. So I, I believe Dee is watching at home. Can we give her a round of applause for all she does? Yay! We love you. <laughs> amazing, amazing woman. A couple of other announcements. If you missed the last Noontime concert series, it was incredible. It will be available online on our YouTube channel beginning this Wednesday, so you can still see that. Uh, some of the services, or here's a list of all those six services. You can find them in your bulletins as well. But on Tuesday the 21st, we have our longest night service at 6 p.m. It's a very special service, especially for those for whom this time of year is difficult. So that's at 6 o'clock on the 21st. Then we have our Christmas Eve Eve service on the 23rd on Siesta Key Beach near the volleyball carts courts that begins at 5 p.m. and then on Christmas Eve here in the sanctuary we have services at 5, 7, 9, and 11 so we hope to see you at one or more of them. Please do come. We are still looking for ushers for the 9 and 11 o'clock service and if that's something that you are available to do it would be of a great service to your church. Um, I know that many of us were just heartbroken to see the devastation from tornadoes on December 11th and that you may be thinking of ways, wondering about ways you could support the people who are suffering there as a result of those storms. We encourage you to look at Presbyterian disaster assistance as a way to do that. There's more information on page 7 of your bulletin about how to do that, how to support those people. And then finally this morning, I wanted to make sure that you saw that uh, Reverend Phil Bliss passed away this week. Um, he was a, just an extraordinary man. He served as a visitation pastor here at Church of the Palms for many, many years. He was beloved by many. He will be missed. We pray for his family. We give thanks for his life. And um, information about his service will follow after the new year. So let us continue our worship. Let us pray. 
Our most gracious and loving God, as we celebrate your love today, we thank you for giving us the gift of birth and life and new beginnings. We thank you for this last Sunday of Advent season. O oh God, take us safely to Bethlehem again in our hearts, we pray. May we celebrate the birth of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, anew in our hearts. We pray for your world, great God. We ask your healing grace for those suffering with illness or confusion. Comfort, comfort those who mourn this day, we pray. We lift up people caught in places of violence and intimidation and fear and natural disaster. Grant them safety and guide all efforts to transform the world into a better place, we pray. Powerful God, be with all the leaders of the nations and grant them your wisdom and guidance, we pray. Protect those who walk in danger and risk for the sake of others. Keep them safe in their duty, we pray. Be with us as the Church of the Palms, that our worship, our mission, our nurture of the young and care for the adult, our service of neighbor and our fellowship might be one seamless expression of our love for you and our love for one another and neighbors. We bring all our prayers to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning includes one of the great Advent texts, the song of Mary during her visit to her cousin Elizabeth. Tradition calls this song the Magnificat, which is Latin for magnified, taken from the first line of the song, my soul magnifies the Lord. It is one of the great and most ancient of Christian hymns. Many composers have set these words to music, including Johann Christian Bach, the youngest son of Johann Sebastian Bach. The younger Bach lived in London and was known as the London Bach. For a while, he was an instructor to the young Mozart. In anticipation of our choir's presentation of Johann Christian Bach's Magnificat, which serves as our moment of gratitude, hear now the word of God that comes to us from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 56. Hear the word of God. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to his promise, he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months 
and then returned to her home. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. God.
Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your mercy and your protection. We present our offerings as an act of gratitude. What we can never repay, we pause to appreciate. In the name of the generosity we cannot match, we seek to be generous toward others. May these offerings do far more than support our church. We dedicate ourselves and these gifts to honor Christ through ministry in the world. Amen. You may be seated. Wow. Thank you so, so much. That was just wonderful. And now I get to follow that. <laughs> Let us pray. By your grace and through your mercy, help us to wonder again at this virgin song and what it might mean for us in these days, how we might live into the vision you have given her. Bless these words to come that they may point to the word just read and sung and to the word made flesh in Jesus the Christ. For we pray this in his name. Amen. <clears throat> In the children's book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, written by C.S. Lewis, one of his Chronicles of Narnia, there's a little girl named Lucy who, during a hide-and-seek game, finds her way into a wardrobe, and as she is pushing her way through the coats and furs to the back, she discovers that there isn't a back and that she's entering a whole other world, a world called Narnia. It's a world with fawns and talking animals and a witch and a great lion called Aslan. And after being there a while, she comes back from Narnia through the wardrobe and she tells them about this world that she's been to and how wonderful it is. And she goes on to describe it, that it's got fawns and talking animals and witches and such. And, but of course, her older siblings do not believe her. It's all just childish make-believe. And Lucy is bitterly disappointed. A few days later, it so happens that she and her brother Edmund are back in the same room and they end up stepping into the wardrobe and sure enough, they push to the back and they both step into Narnia and they go off on their own separate adventures and eventually they come back and Lucy is so excited to be able to tell her older brother and sister the good news that there really is a Narnia and that she has her brother to verify it. So she finds her brother and sister, tells them the good news of this wonderful world, this wonderful other world and then she finally turns to Edmund to verify her story and what does Edmund do? Lewis says that Edmund did the nastiest thing he could ever think to do. He denies it. He shakes his head and says no. No such thing as Narnia. Lucy is crushed. Edmund will not admit to what they both know is true and of course the older children are not going to believe in something they cannot verify, they cannot see. Now later, the good news is the four children all end up together walking into the wardrobe and they make their way through the back, discover that there really is this wonderful other world, this wonderful other world about which it had been so hard to believe. It's so hard to believe in something you cannot see, you cannot touch, you cannot hold like the story of the atheist who took a trip to Scotland and while there decided to do a little fishing out on Loch Ness and as he was fishing, sure enough, the Loch Ness monster arose from the water and grabbed his little boat and threw it and him back and forth and then opened his mouth in preparation for a little mid-afternoon snack. Instinctively, the atheist yelled out, my God, help me, help me, and all of a sudden time stood still and a voice came from heaven, I thought you didn't believe in me. To which the atheist replied, come on, God, give me a break. Ten seconds ago, I didn't believe in the Loch Ness Monster either. <laughs> it takes a lot to get us to believe in things we cannot see, we cannot touch, we cannot hold. So at Christmas time, a young peasant girl steps out of her Palestinian hovel to break the news that she has just been to a world of angels and spirits. 
she has been visited by a being from on high to tell her that inside her virgin womb she will conceive and bear a son and that he will be the son of the Most High and that he will ascend the throne of his father David and over the house of Jacob he will reign forever and ever. This is the unseen world the young Mary has visited. This is the unseen world that has visited her. Now we all know this is an unbelievable story. We all know that things just do not happen this way. Wardrobes are not portals to parallel universes. Prehistoric sea monsters do not dwell below glacial lakes. And peasant girls who claim virgin conceptions are taken to a psychologist. But Christmas is different, isn't it? At Christmas, we suspend our disbelief and we give this young girl the benefit of the doubt. We believe the unbelievable, at least I do. Born of the Virgin Mary is what we say over and over again, Sunday to Sunday as we recite the Apostles' Creed. It rolls off our tongues almost without a thought as to how unbelievable it is. But Christmas opens our hearts to entertain this world of angels and spirits and miracle conceptions and heavenly hosts. Christmas opens the wardrobe and beckons us in through the furs to the world we normally cannot see or refuse to see. For a time, the world gets charged with the supernatural. And we tell miracle stories to each other, Hallmark stories, Santa stories, Scrooge stories, Grinch stories. Because Mary has invited us to believe the unbelievable and Christmas gives us permission to shake off, if only for a moment, our cynicism and our despair to think that maybe God can do such things. Maybe God can grow the Grinch's heart. Maybe God can open Scrooge's eyes. Maybe God can reconcile warring families. Maybe God can, can restore broken marriages. Maybe God can bring food to the hungry and visiting to the lonely and set the gentle lamb alongside the growling lion. Maybe God can make the unbelievable believable. Maybe God can open that heart of ours to let the invisible world, the world of angels and spirits, slip in long enough for us to sing joy to the world. Joy to the world? To this weary world? To this troubled sphere? Dare we dream that this world that seems spiraling downward can be lifted upward is is the unbelievable believable what child is this we will sing shortly we who would lead us to believe what the angels sing peace on earth goodwill to all dare we believe this goodwill to all And so as to leave no doubt, Mary clears her throat and starts to sing. My soul magnifies. My soul magnifies. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. From deep within her womb where God is stirring, Mary is here to announce that there is this invisible kingdom. There is this Narnia. There is this realm of angels and spirits that seeks to bring about not just a baby from within a virgin's womb, but a revolution from the heart of heaven. That the kingdom is coming, the new world is beginning. It will no longer be the same old world. No, in this world, he will bring down the powerful from their thrones and lift up the lowly. He will fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. We are being visited by the heavenly conspirators, says Mary. They will not rest until a new world is established. The son of the Most High, the one who ascends the throne of David, is establishing a new order. And in this new and invisible kingdom, everybody counts. 
Everybody counts. Every life matters. The poor count as much as the rich. The hungry matter as much as the satiated. And because everybody counts, it means that everybody is connected. You count no less than me. And because you count no less than me, then we are connected. We are a part of each other. If God connects a peasant to an angel, if God connects the shepherds to a heavenly host, if God connects a king to a cattle trough, then magnify the Lord with me, Mary sings. Let us be about the business of believing the unbelievable. The unbelievable reality that everybody counts as we light our candle of love because love opens our eyes to see the counted, to see the connected. And there are no rich and there are no poor because the divine love has filled the valleys and lowered the mountains and made us responsible for each other. Do you believe this, Mary asks. She steps out of her wardrobes and says, will you believe this? Will you sing this song with me? Will you keep singing with me until you cannot get it out of your head. You know those songs, right? Those songs you can't get out of your head. You had it happen a million times, especially at Christmas time. You get that song in your head and you just can't get it out. When I was writing this sermon, I had a song in my head I just could not get out of my head. It was a song that came from my teenage years and I couldn't stop hearing it. I couldn't stop singing it. I couldn't stop humming it. And you know what's worse? What's worse was the song it was. The song it was. I couldn't get it out of my head. It was a song by an old 70s band, Electric Like Orchestra, and the title of the song is I Can't Get It Out of My Head. <laughs> <clears throat> So Mary comes from her world of spirits and angels and divine conceptions and sings a much better song and wonders if we can believe it. If you can believe in a virgin birth, you can believe then in a God who plans to bring the world together in love. Can this be the song that you cannot get out of your head, the mission that cannot be shaken? I'm not sure we have any other choice on this spaceship Earth, this vessel spinning through the cosmos, this global village of which we were all citizens. Are we left with no other choice than to see that we all connect and we all count? It matters, it matters what happens to my neighbor near and far because I need my neighbor. No man is an island, writes the poet. We are all connected to one another. My humanity is tied up with another's humanity. Every person's death diminishes me. My hunger is connected to another's hunger. My hurt to another's hurt. My survival to another's survival. We are connected, are we not, to those folks in Bowling Green, Kentucky, whose lives went up in a funnel cloud. We are connected, are we not, to that COVID patient on the way to the hospital down Bee Ridge Road? Are we not connected to the person of color who is denied respect and even a chance and just treatment from the law? We are connected, are we not, to that El Salvadoran mother trying to get her family across the border? We are connected, are we not, to the dissident in Myanmar jailed by a military government? We are connected, are we not, to that poor peasant couple couple out there in the barn giving birth. The talking heads keep telling us we're not connected. They keep pitting us against each other. But Mary sings a different song. Mitch Album, in his most recent book, the Stranger in the Lifeboat revisits the age-old narrative of strangers who make their way to a lifeboat after their ship has gone. And they are first now strangers to each other. Even they see each other as threats. But because they have no choice, they must know each other, they must learn about each other, and they must finally depend on each other. And bank accounts and positions no longer matter, 
race and nationality no longer matter. Political party no longer matters. What matters is that we share the same boat and the same life, and we need each other to survive. Is this what the angels were singing? Good will to all. Were they echoing the virgin's song that we all count and are all connected, that shepherds and angels belong not only to the same universe, but to each other? Is this the candle we light today? Is this the song we sing? Is this the world the virgin births us into? A world where all connect and all count. A world where kings are born in stables. A world where peasants start revolutions a world where shepherds walk the red carpet for the premiere of the heavenly host, a world where the Father of all mercies puts himself at our mercy. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Dare we believe? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.